The next person we want to welcome up on stage will be Dr. Abiyoma. If you can come up, let us put our hands together today. We want to be able to also talk about as, as far as importance of uh, health and also training and certain things he's going to talk to us about today is going to be diabetes, high cholesterol, um, high blood pressure, uh, obesity, those things that we can tackle on his view on it and some education that he can give us about uh, uh, Dr. Abioma, he comes from Nigeria. Uh, from Igbo states, you guys don't know it. I lived there for a couple of years, so that was an awesome, awesome people. And um, he studied all over the world. He, in, um, especially, um, he, his specialty is in kidneys. He specializes in that. I uh, don't even know the term for that one is. is nephrology something like that <laughs> and um, he studied all over the world for that and finally in 2004 he moved to Tri-Cities and now he works at the Trias Hospital uh, there so he worked all over the U.S. and then 2004 he actually came to live here in the Tri-Cities he works here so he's an awesome awesome doctor and that's you know I said a little bit but I want you to just say a little bit about yourself your studies what you accomplished and uh, who you are now and what you do. Well, uh, thank you for having me. I think I came for one of your programs at the track, and it was kind of an in and out thing for me. But uh, it's a blessing to be here worshiping with everyone, and I know that I'll be blessed, and likewise, you all will be blessed. Um, like you said, my name is Dr. Nora, and I'm from Nigeria, Amibo. I'm from Southeast Nigeria. I did my medical education in Nigeria, internship in the, in the Caribbean, and then again internship in New York, residency and fellowship in New York, and then I decided to hop around the nation first. Uh, at least if you come to America, you need to know the place. So in one of my trips, I can hear my son crying over there, but... <laughs> In one of my trips, I landed here in Washington State, and uh, it was a miracle because I was talking with uh, my spouse and then, and I said, the only state I haven't been to is Washington State and Maine, and how can I get there? The very next day, I received a call. Uh, we are looking for somebody who's going to come in and relieve some two folks who are leaving the Tri-Cities. I'm like, I looked at my wife, and I said, this is not real. <laughs> and 24 hours later, I was here in Pasco and did my two weeks gig, went back, came back for six months. The place is a gig. I came back again, and I've been here since then. But it's given me the opportunity to still continue my mission. I go on mission trips. I used to go to the Caribbean and South America, but uh, I now concentrate in going to Nigeria. So I go there two, three times a year, except for last year when I went. Yeah, I went twice last year, actually, yeah. Okay, so Dr. So, Abiyama, um, what is your specialty right now that you work at the Trios Hospital? What is something that you specialize in, in your, your field of work? Well, I am an internist and a nephrologist. Nephrologist means just the care of the kidney. Okay, so can you, uh, today you wanna, we want to talk about high blood pressure, high cholesterol, obesity, um, and diabetes. Uh, what can you teach us about those things and maybe some people are, who have that in their life, how to prevent it, and if people have it already, how to, um, to be able to go about that? There are key things in life that everybody must have. One of them is personal discipline. Uh, my gentleman team, uh, is his team, right? Tio, Tino, yeah. His line of work is what I think everyone should embrace with or without disease. Without disease, it keeps you going. With disease, it makes you at least believe in yourself that you can do what you have to do. Let it be that your body is kind of breaking apart on its own, but usually it doesn't if you apply wisdom. As I was talking with Mark yesterday, uh, there are a few things that uh, uh, he wanted me to talk about, diabetes, high blood pressure, and I said to him, 
You know, in my line of work and with the people I see on daily basis, you can just draw this and you see that everything is an offshoot of this. We're talking about cancer, probably a little different, but it's not far away from this. Uh, if you talk about diabetes, most of these things you see here are either genetic or environmental causes. The genetic causes, you can't do anything about it because it's already mapped out in your genes. But the environmental aspect of it is what you can control. So, so just to, to clear this up, so you're saying that there's two factors that we have. We have environmental and we have in genes. In genes, something that has already been, it's, it goes down from the bloodline. Mm -hmm. But environmental is something that we can control. Yes. Something that we have control over. So either by that we can get it or by that we can prevent it from happening to us. Is that correct? Exactly. All right, continue. So, uh, and you can see that all these diseases and many more diseases feed on each other. I just used just a couple, maybe uh, four diseases here to just explain. It doesn't mean that these are all the diseases you have or all the diseases that are mapped out by gene or environmental factors. But looking at this, for those who abuse their bodies by way of the way they live, they don't care about what calories they put in, they don't care about what time they put in those calories, they don't care about whether they can burn it off or not burn it off, they end up sometimes becoming a little bit large size. And large size means that your body cannot utilize your insulin. And when that happens and it continues to, you know, carry itself on and on, it gets to a point where your blood sugar cannot be lowered by your own insulin. And that's what we call type 2 diabetes. There are different forms of type 2 diabetes. But some people are born genetically predisposed to have type 2 diabetes because it has run in their families over the years. But with this, you see that you can actually do something to prevent that from being a part of your line. And if it has been genetically predisposed to diabetes, you can actually prolong the time that it takes you to actually manifest the disease, the disease by actually taking care of yourself trying to burn out your extra, extra calories by exercising, try to control yourself, your self habits, and eat right. So those things will help diabetes. But you see, diabetes can also feed on high blood pressure because what you eat can also contain a lot of salt. For people that eat you know, packaged foods and uh, you know, all these uh, burgers and stuff and stuff, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't eat those but think about what you're feeding yourself. If you feed yourself a lot of high salt, you end up acquiring more fluid than you necessarily don't need. And what's your blood pressure? It's a factor of your blood volume and the pressure along your blood vessels. If your blood volume is high, you can get high blood pressure. Some people have it at younger age. Some people can prolong it. And if it's inevitable, they have it at their older age. You know, hypertension, many people, probably about 70% of all people, if you live beyond 75, you will become hypertensive. So you can prolong your own to such an extent that at 90, you will still not be hypertensive. So it's what you can do. So what are the, 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 you're saying, so the main factors of all these sicknesses that we can do is what we eat and the exercise, the discipline that we have with our body. Is that correct? That's part of it. Okay. And I know something that yesterday we were talking with you, you told me something about when you walk into the habituary. Can you, can you mention that again? That really uh, stuck out when you see those people. <laughs> that really kind of hit me. So can you say that again? So coming down to what we talked about yesterday, and I said... Is it time for us to do something? No time is too late. You know, you can attest to the fact that you said, no time is too late for you to do something. It's only when you're so crippled up that you can't do anything, but at least if you can use your hands, you can take a can of something and just wiggle it this way and turn up your muscles. 
think about it. Is it too late when you flip up a newspaper, like we talked about yesterday? Everybody reads newspapers once, probably in a lifetime. But you keep flipping up until you get to the obituary page, and you have ages between 10 or even younger to 90. And the question is, which one do you want to belong? Because each one of us, once we are born, one day we'll find ourselves in that paper. Which age do we want to be at when we find ourselves there? 10, 20, 30, 40, 90. So it's our choice. And likewise, it's our choice to alter the environmental aspect of disease causing things that can affect us. And all these triad, all these that I wrote down here, they all feed into what we call organ failures. There's no way to stretch it. People have you know, strokes in the head. We call it brain attack. Some call it you know, stroke. And, but then the brain is going. You lose part of your limb, your activity. You know, that's that. Heart failure. It starts with heart disease, but it ends up with heart failure, and you need a heart transplant. Kidney disease starts off very small, ends up with kidney failure. You need dialysis. You need a transplant. At least it ends at the beginning. For us to pick up the tab and say, this far and no more, we do what we have to do on our own side and let God do what he has to do on his side. Come on, let us put our hands together for Jesus Christ. It is so awesome. Thank you for your advice.